Yo guys, what is going on? JPS back with another video. And today we're gonna to be reacting to why American healthcare is the worst in the developed world. This is coming from a channel called Second Thought, so give them the credit they deserve. Um, awesome channel. But yeah, hit that like button, hit subscribe, and let's get straight into this without any further ado. Let's go. Make sure you guys also comment stuff you want me to check out in the comment section. This was a recommended video. Um, and yeah, let's get right into it. The title says it all. Oops, there we go. This episode is brought to you by Curiosity Stream. Skip this. Stream method. I wonder if you could tell me how oh. expensive you think calling an ambulance out to your location is in America. Okay, is there a price for that? Yes. Jeez, um, a hundred dollars? dollars? I've seen this. Uh, yeah, yeah. Seen this video before. What? Why? They that, billed that our insurance company over three million dollars for the cost of transplant. I don't know what people do without insurance. How, how could you even begin to pay that? She said, uh, the bill is up to eighty thousand dollars already, and she said, Mrs. Weinkoff, I hope you realize that you're responsible for this bill. I thought, what am I going to do? I've worked my whole life. Is this how my life is going to end? In a previous episode, I briefly touched on the failures of the American healthcare system. That section of the video prompted all sorts of responses in the comments, mostly from Europeans who were horrified to learn that Americans have to pay for an ambulance ride to the hospital, but also a handful of brave patriots who claim, without evidence, that the American healthcare system is the best in the world. This video is for those people. Let's jump right in. I'm gonna throw a bunch of statistics at you, and then we'll look at the root cause of the problem. America spends more money per capita on healthcare than any other nation on Earth. You would think that this expenditure would guarantee the best care in the world. That is not the case. In fact, despite being the most expensive healthcare system on Earth, consuming over 16% of our GDP, it's one of, if not the least effective in the developed world. We spend over $10,000 per capita on healthcare, and not only is the quality of care subpar, we don't even cover everybody. Compare this to mm. places like Germany who pay drastically less per capita and guarantee coverage to all their citizens. There were over 27 million uninsured Americans in 2018, and that number will have skyrocketed in recent months, thanks to the millions of layoffs across the country. Even before the epidemic, we had more uninsured and underinsured citizens than any other developed nation. In addition to not covering a large portion of the population, even those with excellent, by American standards, health insurance struggle to pay medical bills. Over 25% yeah. of insured people reported having difficulty paying for the exorbitant cost of their treatment. Of this group, 63% had to pay most or all of their savings to cover the medical bills, and 42% had to get a second job. Life-saving drugs in America often cost Bro. 10 times what they cost in other countries. For example, in Canada, one vial of insulin costs $32. In the United States, the same drug from the same factory costs $300. And that's not even an extreme example. Take the HIV drug Truvada. In Australia, it costs just $8. In the United States, it costs $2,000, despite US taxpayers footing the bill what? for its development. Every year, over half a million people go bankrupt trying to pay their medical bills. In a country where 40% of the population can't afford a surprise $400 expense, an ambulance ride to the hospital will cost you more than twice that amount. And all of this is happening in the richest country on Earth. If we have the resources, and we're so much better than all the other countries, why is our healthcare system so broken? Here's the thing, it's not broken. It's functioning exactly as you'd expect it to. America's healthcare system is for profit. That means instead of providing care because it's the ethical thing to do, they only do it because there's a big check involved. Back in the 30s, Blue Cross and Blue Shield were the two main health insurance providers in the US. In those days, they operated as nonprofits and wouldn't turn anyone away insurance. for any reason. Then, after World War II, employers started offering health insurance as a benefit, and mm -hmm. between 1940 and 1955, the percentage of insured Americans jumped from 10% to over 60%. This new demand for health insurance caught the eye of many business people, and the for-profit healthcare industry was born. By 1951, big names like Aetna and Cigna were major players in the industry, which continued to grow through the 70s and 80s. In the 80s, the country began to see its first for-profit hospitals, operated by large investors who owned multi-hospital chains. By 1981, one in seven hospitals in the US was for-profit. Suddenly, medical bills became a lot longer and more convoluted. Every little thing became an itemized expense, from tissues to plastic cups to being able to hold your baby after it's born. The mm. hospital's transition from philanthropy to corporation was complete. This is not normal in other countries. America had taken the intensely cruel step of taking something sacred, the health and well-being of its citizens, and slapping a price tag on it. 
With this commodification of health came unsurprising side effects. Average American life expectancy is lower than other wealthy countries and has actually begun to decrease in recent years compared to other countries slowly increasing. The U.S. has the highest infant and maternal mortality rates of any developed country. The U.S. has higher rates of medical errors than other countries. Adults in most other comparable countries have quicker access to a doctor or nurse when they need care, contrary to what American healthcare advocates would have you believe. To make a long story short, in just about every study on the effectiveness of healthcare systems in developed nations, America scores very poorly. Most of the Where time at the very bottom of the list. And other nations are taking notice. Towards the beginning of the coronavirus epidemic, one university in Norway urged its students to come home if they were studying in countries with poorly developed health systems, such as the US. Part of the problem is the American obsession with streamlining or optimization. Anything that doesn't immediately increase profits has to go. Take, for example, the practice of so-called just-in-time delivery of essential equipment such as ventilators. Instead of having an emergency stockpile, including personal protective equipment such as masks and gloves, these items are instead delivered only when the need arises. The idea is to reduce overhead, but in reality it leaves us totally unprepared and under-equipped for a national pandemic. That's why we see pictures of doctors and nurses wearing trash bags, because their hospitals haven't provided adequate protective equipment, and just to be safe, they're firing people who post those kinds of pictures. To their credit, the CDC was planning to address the national shortage of ventilators, but the company to whom they had given the contract was bought out by a larger company, who cancelled the project because it wasn't going to be profitable enough. And of course that larger company's name is Covidian, because the architects clearly put an intern in charge of our simulation. I could spend all day listing off instances of absurdly high medical bills, but at the end of the day, some people in America will still defend the practice of for-profit healthcare. Maybe the best way to get oh, through yeah. to these people isn't to show them the bills, but He's saying some people, like, that is probably 40 plus percent of the country. Like, this, there's a reason why this is like a controversial topic because there's two sides and both sides are very large. But to show them what people in other saner countries you. think of the bills. So, here you go. Ambulance call out, how much do you think that costs? Zero payment. Zero payment. Yeah, zero payment. No. <laughs> it oh, costs two and a half thousand dollars. For, for real? An inhaler. $100. Yeah, you're pretty close, a bit more. 120 250 to 350 For an inhaler? Mm. So, two EpiPens, okay. how much do you reckon they are? $80. 600 $600? <laughs> That's what? a lot of money. Why? 100 200 Dollars? Yeah. Uh, the average is about 10 grand, it can go up to 30000 10 grand? For a baby? It's okay to laugh, it's a funny video, but these are the types of reaction you get when you explain to anyone in a first world country. See, I'm still laughing even though I've already, I've reacted to this uh, Joe video about healthcare. So I've seen Country besides clips. the US, just how screwed up our healthcare system is. We're not paying these exorbitant fees for quality oh, care. Man. We're paying for executive bonuses, shareholder value, and lucrative contracts. Pharmaceutical and medical device companies can charge whatever they want, and the US government will never step in. We're one of the only nations on earth that doesn't regulate the cost of drugs and medical supplies, and companies negotiate directly with hospitals and insurers to get yep. the best terms. Not best for the patient, best for them. Drug costs in America are many times higher than in any other country. Why? Because that's how it works in a for-profit system. The dollar holds infinitely more value to these corporations than human well-being. The of needs of the people are secondary to the profit motive. The American healthcare system is a system that relies on people getting sick and coming in for treatment, which is why we don't see any investment in public health initiatives. A program like Medicare for All would likely solve this and every other health problem produced by the coronavirus pandemic. Everyone would have been able to see a doctor and get tested, which would have given us more accurate data about the illness and its spread. Hospitals wouldn't have to waste energy dealing with private insurers and fighting them on every little thing. And with the profit motive removed from the healthcare equation, the government would have an incentive to prioritize public health to prevent people from getting sick instead of counting on it. That in turn would make us better prepared for the next pandemic. But remember, the system that we have isn't broken. It's functioning exactly as it's meant to. Why do we pay so much money for the worst care in the developed world? And more importantly, why do we put up with it? If you'd like to learn more about the virus that made it clear just how ill-prepared the U.S. was for a pandemic, I highly recommend you check out the coronavirus epidemic on CuriosityStream. It's a fascinating- Alright, I think this is a little plug here. Anyways. Alright. So. One of my thoughts on this. Mmm. I still... 
believe the exact same thing as before. I don't know why we don't have a different healthcare system. Uh, it's, I feel like it's been like this. He literally said since like 1930, um, basically after world, the first world war. And then after that, everything went downhill. So <laughs> I don't know what to say. I, I feel like people have been advocating for free healthcare for a very long time and nothing's changing. So I think this is just the system we have and it is it is what it is at this point. I'm kind of pessimistic on the whole healthcare thing. If anyone has any ideas as to what we should do, obviously I, be, I believe anyone watching this video, since you have the NHS, you're gonna believe the same thing that I believe is that like there should be equitable health care. But give me some ways that could happen. Because people are always saying, like, we need free health care. But they don't provide any actual solutions to do so. Because obviously the people who are proposing solutions, the solutions aren't good. Because a lot of people don't agree with it. Like, there are there's a lot of opposition to, you know, free health care or Medicaid. And Obamacare had a lot of opposition, so... Let me know in the comments what you think about that. But, yeah, that was a very interesting video. I think he definitely made some good points there. And I, I don't really disagree much. I, we need a different healthcare system. It's pretty simple. But not simple at all. <laughs> Anyways, hit that like button, hit subscribe, and I will catch you all in the next video.